Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of the .NET Show, I'm introducing bindable objects and bindable properties as a way to handle property change notifications in a MAUI XAML app. Bindable properties are an essential part of developing a robust user interface in MAUI. They allow you to create XAML component properties that can be bound to UI elements, enabling you to respond to user input and update the UI in real time. With bindable properties, you can also perform validation, but we'll cover that in episode 40. Today, it's all about property change notifications. We'll start the demo by using the old way of notifying the UI when a property changes, which is to implement iNotify property changed. Next, I'll show how to use observable object to reduce the boilerplate code of using iNotify property changed. Then we'll move on to the new way of doing this, which is creating a bindable property using bindable property create and binding it to our UI. Finally, we'll implement bindable properties in a XAML component with the goal of keeping our models clean with no base classes or notify property changed implementation. And that's all coming right up on the .NET Show. So I'd like to bring your attention right away to my repo, Bindable Properties in Maui, and that's at github.com slash Carl Franklin. So this is, like all of my other shows, um, a document that has all of the instructions, screenshots, code snippets, and everything to do what we're going to do in this tutorial. So I'm starting with a project called Bindable Properties in Maui. It is a Maui XAML project. Now, you might be asking, what about Maui Blazor? Well, bindable properties are really only a Maui XAML thing. Maui Blazor doesn't require property change notification. Instead, it uses its own binding system, which relies on using state as changed to re-render a component or a page. So this is only applicable to Maui XAML applications. So before we dive into bindable properties, let's take a step back and look at implementing iNotify property changed. This interface is used to notify the UI when a property changes so that it can be updated accordingly. And we've been doing iNotify property changed forever in XAML, ever since the very first XAML came out. So I want to contrast what we had to do with what we're doing now. And in between there, we're going to look at MVVM Toolkit. So you can think of this demo as a progression of property change notification techniques from the very beginning, advancing on all the way to bindable properties. All right, let's create a person class. So this is a person class. You can think of this as your model, all right? But the model is going to implement iNotify property changed itself, okay? In MVVM, you would use a view model to do this, but this is in the model, all right? That's where we're starting. So we've got three properties, first name, last name, and date of birth. There's first name, last name, and date of birth. And since we're implementing iNotify property changed, we define a property changed event of property changed event handler type. And we can invoke that whenever a property changes. And you have this nice little wrapper function on property changed with a property name. And so that's what we call in our setters, right? So look at date of birth. We're returning if the value of the property is already set to the incoming value. Otherwise, we're going to set the value and then call on property changed with the name date of birth. Now, in order to test this, I'm going to create a XAML component called person component. So I'm going to add a new item and I'm just going to say person component dot XAML. Now I'm going to add a code behind file. Person component XAML CS. So before we get to the markup, we have a private person object with these properties Carl, Franklin, date, time, now. I'm setting the binding context to that person. And I have a date picker. And when I select a new date, I'm updating the date of birth. And this is how we bind it. Since the binding context is already set in the code, 
I can just specify the property names with binding. First name, last name, date of birth. Now let's take care of the main page. Going to delete everything except that person component on the main page. And I also have to clean up the code behind. There we go. So let's run it in Windows and see what happens. So here we go. I can change this now. And it doesn't look like anything's really changing. So how can we test that things are changing? Well, let's go to Person. And we'll look in Set here. For the first name, put a breakpoint right there on line 22. Well, yeah, that's changing. That's updating. Now, of course, you're probably going to use a view model, but this is the idea. I notify property changed. So, so far, we've created a person class that implements I notify property change with first name, last name, and birth date. We created a person component content view control to represent a person and bind its properties to the person object. And we replaced the main page XAML and code behind to display the person component. Coming up next, we're going to use the MVVM toolkit. The MVVM toolkit is a set of libraries for building modern, scalable, and easy to maintain applications using the Model View View Model or MVVM pattern in WPF, WinUI, Xamarin, and MAUI. The toolkit provides a number of features that simplify the development process and make it easier to create maintainable and testable code. Some of the benefits of the MVVM toolkit include simplified data binding, a simplified syntax for data binding which makes it easy to bind data between the view and view model without having to write a lot of boilerplate code. Also commanding, a command class that you can use to bind to commands on the view model without having to call it explicitly, and observable object, an observable object class that simplifies the implementation of the iNotify property change interface, which is required for data binding. The observable object class provides a set property method that automatically raises the property changed event and updates the value of the property. So the first thing we have to do is install a NuGet package, communitytoolkit.mvvm. Next, we're going to replace the code in the person model. Now person inherits from observable object. So we have the same constructor, and now instead of calling property changed, we call set property, just like so. Now everything else is the same, so I'm just going to put a breakpoint here on first name and run it. Now it's going to hit before the UI even shows, and that's fine. So let me change that to a K. Boom. Okay. Now the syntax is a little bit different, but it does the same thing. It's a little bit better. And next, you guessed it, we're talking about bindable properties. Let's now shift our focus to creating bindable properties since we now understand how to implement iNotify property change. So here's what the new code looks like. I have created three bindable property objects, one for first name, one for last name, and one for date of birth. And I've used bindable property.create. The first parameter is the name of the property. Second parameter is the type of the property. The third parameter is the declaring type. In other words, our type, person, type of person, and then the default value. Now, bindable property does a lot more than handle notify property changes. We'll get to that. Now, our constructor stays the same. And now we have get value and set value, which are members of bindable object. And you use the bindable properties as your backing fields. So now let's just make sure that when we run it, we can set a breakpoint here, like on 27. So I'll set my breakpoint and change the first letter, and there we go. So the value passed in is Carl with a K, and that seems to work just like before. So at this point, I bet you're a little confused. I bet you've never seen anybody implement bindable object in a model class. Seems a little crazy, and you're right. 
So where does bindable object work? Well, the answer is in a component. So let's talk about what we've done so far. I notify property changed is basically something that you'd implement in a model to help with property changes. But it requires that you implement that interface and in your setters you call on property changed. Observable object kind of makes that job a little bit easier, but it's a base class that you have to implement. What if you want to keep your model clean? Can we still do this? Well, yeah. The answer is let's move the bindable property to the component itself. That's where it's supposed to be used. Bindable properties are for implementing properties on a component, not in your model. So we can get rid of all of this cruft and go back to using a clean model. Let's do that right now. I've added these setters here as explicit setters so that we can actually put a breakpoint there. So in the demo, we can see that the setter is being called. Next, we're going to change the person component XAML. And all we've really done here is added a person property, which is going to be a person object. And we're binding to first name and last name and date of birth. Now we have to implement that as a bindable property in the code behind. And here's how we'll do that. So we've moved our bindable property, our person property, to the component. We've added a public person property now. And we still have our date picker date selected. Now the only thing left to do is initialize the person data in main page because it's not here anymore, right? So let's go back to main page. And all I'm really doing here is adding a name, my person component, so I can reference it. And in the code behind, I'm just saying my person component dot person equals new person, blah, blah, blah. Now I could create a person object up here and then set the person to that person object. It doesn't matter. In fact, we're going to do that in a minute. So let's run it again. Okay, let's go back to our person class. Set a breakpoint on first name. And now if I type O, let's say, for Carlo, you can see that it's setting the property value. So isn't that better? You don't have to implement I notify property changed at all. But you never really did have to do that in order for the UI to change a property of an object it's bound to. The real test is can we change the code from outside the class and outside the UI and have it reflected in the UI? Let's make a change in main page XAML. We're going to create a stack layout now, put our person component inside of it, and now I have a button with a clicked handler. And in that clicked handler, we are going to change properties on our model. Now, I've created an object up here, my person, right? And then I've set that up, Carl Franklin, daytime now. And now I'm setting the bindable person property on the component to my plain vanilla object. So what happens if I say change properties on the object? Will it reflect? What do you think? Hmm. No, it doesn't. Let's see if it's still changing here. Yeah. So here's the situation. The model is changing, right? We're actually changing the model in the code, but it's not reflecting. So this is where I notify property change comes in handy. But I have the goal here of keeping my model completely clean. So there's a little hack that we're going to do on person component XAML. We're going to add this, a refresh method. So anytime we want the component to refresh from the object, yes, the object itself didn't change, but a property on the object changed, right? And without I notify property changed in the model, that's not going to get reflected. So all we're doing here is when we call refresh from outside, we'll say on property changed the person property, which is our bindable property. Now, all we have to do is this. Tell the component to refresh. And there it is. Now, if you've done any Blazor programming, this kind of pattern shouldn't be new to you. Um, 
state has changed is something we sometimes have to call in particular situations in Blazor code to update the UI. This is essentially the trade-off that we made when we removed everything from the model to keep it clean. So what have we learned? We learned about bindable properties in MAUI and how to create them. We started off the demo by implementing I notify property changed in the model. And then we showed how to use observable object to reduce the boilerplate code of using I notify property changed. Then we actually created bindable properties in the model. We moved the bindable properties out of the model and into a single bindable property person in the component. And that made everything really clean but then we needed to add a refresh method to the component so the code can tell the UI to update after it changes properties on the model. And that's my demo today. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.